quick revision video on carbon 13 NMR. So we'll start with some basics. So it works with carbon 13 because the nuclei possess spin, and that's because they've got an odd number of nucleons or particles in the nucleus. So we've got six protons and seven neutrons. NMR spectrometers measure the amount of radio wave energy absorbed to resonate the nuclei. And nuclei in different environments absorb slightly different amounts of energy to resonate. So the chemical shift values are on the data sheet. So that's just a screenshot from the data sheet. So you can see to resonate a carbon bonded to a chlorine, it's going to be between 20 and 50 ppm. Whereas carbon double bonded to an oxygen between 160 and 220. Some essentials now. So the number of peaks tells us the number of different carbon environments we've got in the molecule. And the position of peaks or chemical shift or delta value tells us the type of carbon environment. And obviously we get that from the data sheet. A couple of other things. The sample is dissolved in a solvent. So the one mentioned by the syllabus is CdCl3. That's where the hydrogen atom in trichloromethane has been re replaced by a deuterium isotope. And you notice it has got a carbon, so it does give a signal, but the machine can recognize it very easily and just remove it from the spectrum. And finally, the reference molecule, TMS, tetramethylsilane, looks like that. So that's been assigned a chemical shift value of 0 ppm, so all the other chemical shifts are measured relative to that. So we'll just start with a couple of alcohols. We've got um, structural isomers of each other, proton 1 all on the left, proton 2 all on the right. And we'll just look at how many peaks would we expect to see and roughly where would they be. So we'll start with proton 1 all on the left. So we've got 1, 2, 3 environments. Each carbon's in a slightly different environment. Sometimes people think that these two carbons are the same because they're both CH2 groups. Well, this carbon's directly bonded to an oxygen, whereas this carbon, you can see, is directly bonded to carbon. So they are different environments. And this is obviously the only CH3 carbon. So I'd expect to see three peaks. The environment, so the orange and the red, so these two here, they will be both classed as C, C environments, so it, they would resonate or their peaks would appear between this range here. And the green one is a C to O environment, so between 50 and 90. If we look at proton 2 all now, these two carbons here are actually in the same environment because this molecule is symmetrical. So they are the same environment and they will be classed as C to C environments. And this green one obviously is the only C to O environment. So we'd expect to see two peaks. Those CH3 carbons are equivalent. So they would resonate between 0 and 50 ppm. And the green one is C, single bond O, between 50 and 90. So if we look at some spectra now. So we've got two spectra. One's for propanone, CH3, COCH3. And the other one's for 2-bromopropane. So you can see both of them have two peaks, so they both contain two environments. So you can see these CH3 carbons are equivalent, and then this carbon is unique. And again, in 2-bromopropane, these two CH3 carbons would be equivalent, and this carbon is unique. So that's why we're getting two peaks. It's much easier to see this if you draw the displayed formula. They're going to appear in a second on this slide. So how can we work out which one's which? Well, the easiest thing to do is to look at this peak here. And we can see from the data sheet, that's a C double bond O environment. So it's obviously, this spectrum here is obviously for propanone. So propanone, this one, and two bromopropanes, this one here. And you can see much more clearly now, these carbons are equivalent, and so are they. So assigning the other peaks now, the red one here, so that will be those two um, carbons, carbon to carbon environment, and the blue one would be the C double bond O. And finally, this peak here is for those two carbons there, and the green one is the one bonded to the bromine. 
So we'll finish with this. We've got the carbon-13 NMR spectrum for one of these isomers of C8H10. We've got to work out which one's which. So if we start by looking at how many peaks we've got and where are they, we've got one carbon-to-carbon -carbon environment. So straight away we can rule out this one because this has got two carbon-to-carbon -carbon environments. We've also got three aromatic carbon environments. So what I'm going to do now is look at how many um, different carbon environments we've got in each of the isomers and that's going to help us get to the answer. So I'll just go from left to right. So the first thing to say is these two carbons are equivalent and hopefully you can see that we've got a line of symmetry down here. So either side of that we're going to have equivalent environments. So they're equivalent to each other. That's unique. They're equivalent to each other and that's unique. So this one's got five environments so the spectrum's not for that one. Uh, another thing we could say is we've got one, two, three, four aromatic carbon environments. Remember the one in our spectrum's only got three. So in the next one we've got line of symmetry down here and we've got one across there. So they're equivalent to each other they're equivalent to each other and they're all equivalent to each other. So we've only actually got three environments in total. Remember we need four. We've only got two aromatic environments. So there would have only been two um, peaks down here. Next one, remember we've already ruled this one out because it's got two carbon to carbon environments, but we'll just look at them anyway. So these two are separate environments, we've got red and orange. Then we've got the blue one, they're equivalent to each other, they're equivalent to each other, and they're equivalent to each other. So in total we've got six environments, and we've got one, two, three, four aromatic environments, so no good anyway down there. And finally we've got a line of symmetry this way now, so they're equivalent, they're equivalent, they're equivalent, and they're equivalent, so there's the answer. Four environments, and you can see we've got one carbon to carbon environment and one, two, three aromatic carbon environments.